Now, once that, once you've inspected and cleaned everything, including the inside of the shaft, I'm going to go ahead and reassemble the shaft with the uh, the plate there. You've got a, uh, your clean new seal head assembly, and uh, we have another tool. This is what something that we call a bullet tool which uh, isn't essential on the 16 millimeter shafts, but uh, it, it aids in assembly here. And what you want to do is check and see that you don't have any burrs right on this edge here. And this is, like I say, what we call a bullet tool. And we have some of our seal grease here as well. Take a little bit of seal grease. And this, this we also have packaged in tubes so that uh, it can't get dirty. But you want to go ahead and put some seal grease on there then slide that over the end. Go ahead and put that on. Then we can go ahead and get into the valving. And, and it, w right now, we'll actually, we'll take this and we'll set it aside and we'll get into the valving and go through gold valve uh, valving selection. Now back to, the, uh, back to the valving stack. Let me explain what each of these parts are first. This is the washer that goes underneath the, the base, the compression base plate. This is the compression base plate itself. What we want to do is make sure that this is flat. So we'll actually surface this on a piece of, uh, on a piece of plate glass. Some of these are, are, are not very flat at all and some of them are very flat. So we just want to make sure that it is um, before we put it back together. This is the compression valving stack. Then this is the stock piston, which we're going to be replacing with a gold valve. This is the rebound valving stack. This is the rebound base plate and then the nut. Now, I'm, a, I'm going to take this stuff and uh, take this apart and go ahead and put this washer back on the, uh, back on the shaft over here. Okay, and what we then want to do after we put that washer back on the, uh, on the shaft, actually some of the shocks do not have one of those washers, so just be aware of it too. What we're going to do is take a piece of plate glass here. We've got a piece of 320 grit sandpaper on here and surface the base plate. We want to surface both the compression and the rebound base plate. Make sure that they're perfectly flat. And actually what we're going to do is uh, check the, the, the faces of the valve itself before we, uh, before we put it on as well. But uh, we want to go ahead and surface those and clean off the base plate and put it onto the shaft as well. Now, this is a picture of the, the cutaway itself. You can imagine this is half of the shock itself, but this is the valving. So what I'm going to do is go through this and explain it. This again is the nut. This is the rebound base plate. Then this down to this, see this black line here? That actually is the crossover between the low speed rebound stack and the high speed rebound stack. And I'll explain a little bit more about that in just a minute. But this entire stack here, this is, these are the, that uh, ring a, a stack of shims or washers that go against the face of the piston. This is the piston itself. Out here, that's the, uh, the piston ring on the outside. Down here, this is the compression stack, this being the low speed compression down to the black line, which this actually represents a shim itself. And then down here, that's the high speed compression stack. Uh, and then again, the base plate down here, and then the washer that goes underneath the base plate. Now, it's important to note what each of these, these parts do. Number one, you've got to make sure that this rebound base plate is larger in diameter than the last shim on the rebound stack. And typically it will be, and you don't really have to worry about that too much, but I'll explain more about that in a minute and it'll become clear. Basically what happens is, it, this, this is not a detailed view, obviously, of what goes on on the gold valve. And I'll bring the gold valve down here into the picture. This is the gold valve itself. And uh, this is the rebound side, which is the smaller, has the smaller holes. You can see, let's see, eh, it's difficult to see in this shot, but uh, it's got the smaller diameter holes. This is the rebound side. This is the compression size with, side with the large ports. Right here is a, is a place where we actually have a jet for a bypass, which uh, what you do is, is some of these uh, bikes need uh, a bleed, which is something we call a free bleed, which is just as a hole that, that bypasses the valving. Most notably, we use that on Showa's, while the Kayaba design um, pretty much typically flows in both directions. 
Now, uh, uh, let me back up for a minute too. Um, when we are taking off the peening off of the end of the shaft, um, basically what we did is we said that typical Showas hold in something on the inside of the shaft, typical Kayabas just hold it on the outside. There are a few different model, models, excuse me, most notably uh, 91 Hondas, uh, CRs, and uh, like say 89 uh, YZs in particular that actually hold a plug. They have a plug on the end of the shaft that you got to be careful on that one too. But anyway, so, some models were actually going to have a bleed and what we've done is we've provided a jet. This little jet here screws into the gold valve here and it comes blank and what you need to do is you'll drill it out to a particular size that you need it to be depending on the chart. The advantage to this as well is that if you, you blow it and you get too big of a hole, you can just take this out, throw it away and, and put a new jet in and start over. And what you want to do is, this is actually is drilled most of the way through when it comes from, uh, from Racetech and uh, uh, you can start from the side that's already drilled and, and just pop the hole through to the other side. Make sure that this is deburred and cleaned up and uh, then what you do is actually uh, use blue Loctite, which is uh, uh, Loctite 242, I believe, or its equivalent. Loctite, make sure these threads are really clean and Loctite this in. Um, then what we're going to do is actually show you how this, this valving stack goes together. Let's take a look at, for instance, this is the compression stack. The compression stack, what goes on is oil actually gets fed through, like I say again, there's no, no picture of the cutaway here, but it gets fed through these passages here, which are in this gold valve, and it feeds these washers or shims. This is the low speed stack. The low speed stack uh, actually gets pushed away from the piston face. And depending on the number of these shims and the thickness of these shims, uh, will determine what the low speed compression damping is. Um, then the reason this is darkened out is just to accentuate that there's a gap between this stack and this stack. Now if this shim were not there and it were just one stack, this would be called a single stage stack. In other words, when the oil goes through here, it has to push this entire stack of shims off of the piston face. So what we've done actually in, in this particular drawing is we put a, a shim in the middle here, not necessarily exactly in the middle, but we put a shim in, in this stack so that the low speed stack can open up fairly easily and then the high speed stack can stiffen it up as it gets into higher and higher velocities. Now this again is a two speed stack. On some uh, applications we actually will use a three speed or three stage valving. On the rebound typically we're using a two stage valving as far as the shims are concerned and then some t type of a, a bleed that actually goes in both directions. The bleed again was, was, uh, is accomplished either with this jet that we drill out for, for instance, for the Showas, or on the Kayaba design, uh, it actually uh, is automatically uh, operates like that, it goes in both directions. It's a tapered needle in an orifice. So what you want to do is you want to make sure that as these go on the stack, the, obviously your compression base plate and your compression stack go on first, then the gold valve, then the, the rebound stack, starting with the low speed rebound, the high speed rebound, the uh, rebound base plate and then the nut. Now there's a couple of things that are very critical here and I'll get to them later. But what I'm going to do is actually give you a, a, a have you take a look at the gold valve valving chart, one of the early versions, which is over here. And we're going to have to zoom in on that or it all just looks like chicken scratch. And what, you, what you'll notice here is that what we've got is we've got a low speed compression valving chart, a mid speed chart, and a high speed chart. Some models, some applications, we will use a mid speed stack which will make it a three stage stack. Some models will just use a two stage stack. And in some rare instances, we'll even use just simply a single stage stack. But what you will do is depending on the, the valving selection criteria, you will choose one of these stacks. As you increase in number, as you go along this direction, uh, the, the stack gets stiffer and stiffer and stiffer. So in this particular case on this chart, again this is an early chart, it goes from CL1 all the way through CL20 over on the other side here. 
and each successive stack is stiffer and stiffer and stiffer. Now this is just the low speed stack. You'll have to add the low speed stack to the mid speed and then add that to the high speed to get you a total stack. Again, the mid speed stack is optional on some models. So either you'll have one, two, and three stacks stacked on top of each other or just the low speed and the high speed stacked on top of each other. Again, the low speed goes against the piston face. The high speed goes after that and, goes and ends on the base plate. Now, the rebound valving is done just like the compression valving where we're at a low speed stack to a high speed stack. This is the low speed stack, this is the high speed stack, and then we have the, the bleed sizes just written down here in both, both number drill size and their metric equivalents. But again, the low speed stack always goes against the piston face, then the high speed stack goes against the low speed stack and ends on the base plate. So uh, enough about that, there actually will be instructions uh, along with the goal valve uh, kit on how to use this valving chart. So if it doesn't make a heck of a lot of sense right now, just the main things to understand are that the entire stack is made up of a low speed and a high speed, or a low, a mid, and a high on compression, and on rebound, a low speed and a high speed. It's not one or the other. It is those two stacked together. The other thing to understand is that as the numbers get higher and higher, uh, the stacks get stiffer and stiffer. So what we're going to be doing uh, is actually, say for instance, if I have CL4, we'll add CL4 to say maybe uh, CH6, add those two stacks together and apply that to your model. Uh, again, that's, I'm just using that as an example, but uh, uh, that's how we're actually going to build these stacks up.